Hey guys, and welcome to another episode. Today I'm gonna to show you how to replace a wheel bearing. So to replace the bad wheel bearing, we need to get access to it by removing a lot of the components up in the front suspension. So to get started, we need to remove the two bolts that are on the back side of the brake caliper so that we can remove the caliper from the knuckle. Once you have it removed, you can then hang it from the strut so that the weight of the caliper isn't suspended from the brake line. Remove the bolt holding the brake rotor to the knuckle and then set the rotor aside. Remove the axle nut with a 30 millimeter socket. Now I'm using an impact wrench just to make it a little bit easier. Then remove the three bolts holding the lower control arm to the ball joint. Then remove the cotter pin and the castle nut so that the tie rod end is free from the knuckle. Disconnect the ABS sensor and any wiring that's attached to the knuckle. Then remove the bolt and nut found on the back side of the knuckle securing it to the strut. Remove the three bolts for the brake dust shield and then finally hammer the knuckle off of the strut so we can dismount it from the car. Now once we have the entire knuckle removed from the car we need to take off this, the little hub part right here that has the ABS monitor and module attached to it so that we can get access to the bearing behind it and push it out. Now unfortunately I don't have a press to do this so you can do one of two things. You can either go to your local parts store, rent the tools or buy the tools to press the entire thing out and then put it back in or the option that I'm going to do is you can take the entire knuckle off the car get your new wheel bearing, bring all of it down to a shop, and get them to press the old one out and put the new one in. Now it's going to be very easy because you've basically got almost all of it done. The more you can strip this down the better so that it's less work for them on their end. So with that being said, it's going to cost you probably 20-30 bucks to get this done for both sides. Now the press is going to be around 2-300 bucks depending on what kind you want, but I don't have that money to just dump into this. So if you guys are in the same position as me, Take it off the car as much as you can, bring it down to your local mechanic shop, get them to press it in and out, and call it a day. After that, it's just a matter of putting it all back together. All right, now I wanna see if I can try and show you guys why this has failed. So if you can hear this, there's a little bit of play, and uh, well, there's noise that's coming from the bearing when you turn it. Here's a better example as to what a bad bearing sounds like when you spin it. Can you hear that? That sound isn't too bad at low speeds like this, but when you put this on a car and say you're driving uh, 50 miles an hour or say something like that, this is going to be a lot more exaggerated and it's going to be a lot louder in the car. This is also going to be transmitted from the wheel into the suspension and all the way up into the cabin and it's going to be a very unpleasant noise. So I just came back from the shop and they installed a new wheel bearing on the hub. So they took out this front piece and then the wheel bearing can be pulled out and extracted from that way. And if you see from the other side, you can see that the wheel bearing is new and spins freely. Now we're going to be installing this and throwing this on the car. So first things first, we're going to have to insert the strut into here. So just so that the installation goes a little bit easier for a demonstration purpose, I moved the brake caliper off of the hanger that was supporting it from up top here on the strut. Just so that it'd be out of the way and I can install the, uh, the knuckle back on here. So grab your knuckle. And you're going to have to feed it up onto the shaft of here so it's fully set and installed just like that. If you can, move the axle slightly out of the way to give you a little bit more room. But it's pretty straightforward. You just get the, get the knuckle, align it up here, and make sure that you're feeding it so that this little piece on the back gets threaded and mounted in between the back side of the knuckle. Now if it's being difficult pushing it up, if you want you can grab some any kind of lubrication I'm using WD-40 and just spraying it up onto the top part here. And after that, you just get a hammer and start hitting it up. So just like I said, make sure that when you're lining it, that the little piece goes in between here because we've got to install this bolt through the back side of this. So make sure that it's aligned properly. Once it's like that, you can then get your bolt, feed it through the one side and make it through, make it go through the other side and put the nut on the other end of it. Then grab an 18 millimeter socket, put it on either an impact gun or a wrench and tighten up the back nut over here. To make sure that this doesn't spin, get a wrench, hold it on the other side and then tighten it up. Now the next step is we need to insert the axle through the bearing and everything up in here. So before you do that, grab a little bit of lube and apply some on the threads 
of both the inside of the hub, on there, and on the teeth of the axle. So if you can see in there, we've got a little bit of lube along with on there. So once we do this, we're not gonna have any seizing or anything on the inside of the hub, and this is gonna make sure that the wheel bearing doesn't fail on us prematurely down the road. Now for the next step, there's gonna be two things going on. We need to feed the axle through the wheel bearing in here, and we also need to feed the lower control arm, the ball joint, into the lower control arm. So pull out on this entire thing, get your, get your axle, turn it and feed it up. Once you have the axle slightly angled up so it can fit through the wheel bearing in here, push the lower control arm ball joint through the lower control arm and push it forward. Once you've got that done, you can then twist your axle a little bit and feed the end of it through here. Now, if this doesn't want to go through, if you want on this side of the lower control arm, you can see that we've got the end link right here for a stabilizer bar. And if you undo that, it's going to give you more movement for the lower control arm to move up and down. And it'll be a little bit easier for you to put the axle through the wheel bearing. We then need to reinstall the lower ball joint into the lower control arm with the three bolts and the adapter up top so that it'll all be held in place. So now that that's installed, we need to pull the axle through. And to do that, if you have a couple threads that are sticking out, that's all you need. Grab your nut, thread it on the end of it, then grab your socket and just twist it. And that itself is gonna pull the axle forward into the position that it needs to be in. Now, whatever you're doing, don't use impact tools at this point because we need to set it up against the back side of the hub and you don't wanna have it so it's offset because that's gonna damage it. If you wanna give yourself a little bit more leverage, install this on your ratchet and just tighten this until the threads pull the axle through. Can you see now how it's almost flush? If we keep going, you'll be able to see where we are in a second. Now it's past the nut. If you keep going, this is gonna get into the position that it needs to be in. See how it's spinning? That's the point that we need to be in. So this is tight enough for now. We're gonna take care of this later um, once we put everything else back together. Grab your brake dust shield and then insert each and every one of those three bolts into the front of it to secure it. We then need to hook up the electrical parts of the brakes back up. So install that in there. We've got our wheel speed sensor that has to be clipped in the front, or in the back rather. Click that in. And then you've got your brake wear indicator. Now a lot of German cars will have this. Most Japanese cars I don't think have this sensor, but uh, yeah, just mount this up. Right in there. Grab your bolt and tighten that up. We then need to connect our tie rod end to the back side of the knuckle, so just turn this out of the way. Get your tie rod end, feed it through this back side right here. Grab your nut and then thread it onto the bottom side of the bolt. Grab a 19 millimeter socket and then tighten this up. To make sure that this nut doesn't move, we then need to reinstall our cotter pin back through the bolt down in here. Feed it in and then split the cotter pin so half of it goes on one side and the other half on the other. So, so far we should have our tie rod end attached. We've got our brake dust shield right here. We've got the electrical harness installed for both the wheel speed sensor on this side and the brake wear indicator on this side. Our bolt for the strut is installed and our nut is attached and inserted through the back side of the wheel bearing. We then need to install our brake rotor back onto the back side of the knuckle. So mount that there, and then if you have a bolt that holds the brake rotor onto the knuckle, install it back on the car. We then need to install the brake caliper and pads over the brake rotor onto the knuckle, and then insert the two bolts on the top and bottom to secure the caliper bracket onto the knuckle. So if we look back here, you can see that one bolt that we installed right there, and we've got another one down on the bottom. If your car has a brake wear indicator equipped, you need to grab this and mount it back on the car. 
Remember how I told you that we'd be tightening up that bolt properly afterwards? Well, this is how we take care of it. We need to mount the wheel back on the car, get the car removed of the jack stands, get the car with the weight supported on the jack, and then we're going to need to lower this down into the ground just so that when we apply torque to that bolt, the wheel won't spin. So with the axle nut still somewhat loose, we need to lower the car down onto the ground just to the point where that the wheel won't spin when we use the torque wrench and tighten it. The initial torque spec for this is 147 foot-pounds. So keep ratcheting the torque wrench all the way until you hear a click. And it should sound just like this. So as soon as you hear that click, you know it's tightened up to 148 foot-pounds of torque. You then need to raise the car in the air, spin the wheel a half a turn, lower the car back down onto the ground, loosen up that bolt a half a turn, and you then need to tighten up the axle nut to 37 foot-pounds. Once you hear that click, you then need to turn your torque wrench an additional one-sixth of a turn. So if the top of the tire is 12 o'clock, you need to turn it so it's facing two. Do that and you can rest assured knowing that the axle, the wheel bearing, and the hub are all torqued properly and that the wheel won't fall off when you drive. And once this is all said and done, you should be able to take your car up and down the street and you shouldn't have any problems or noise coming from your wheel bearings. If you guys have any questions regarding the video, throw them down in the comment section below and I'd be happy to help. Again, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.